Canna Aid has the widest selection of cannabinoids, you guys. They carry products with all the cannabinoids you've heard of and some that you haven't. Go check out that Canna Aid. And I want to thank you guys. A lot of people on our show that make this happen. Jan, Erica, Daniel, Cal, Christian A, Christian S, Denny, P Funk, Connor, Abby, Edgar, Kimberly, Selena, Carissa, Cash, Cam, Salar, Nadia, Ali, E Man, Pitt, Chris Frankino, Jennifer, and Elvis. Because we just had a huge trip to Washington, D.C. And uh, everything else that you guys do uh, on a daily basis is greatly appreciated. That being said, we have uh, Jason Gann on with us with Wilfred CBD. That's the new company. And of course, the big show that you had that is just all around the Wilfred. And I'm just curious, being from Australia. Wait, did you just say all around the this- Did you just say all around the Wilfred? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what I'm saying. He said this way, show has been is- all around the Wilfred. <laughs> all around the world with Wilfred. Yeah. Who did you meet out here in California where you're like, holy shit, they're a fan of the show? Because your show picked up, it's, you know, four seasons is big here in America. People love the show here. And Joe. picked up a lot of legs. Yeah. I've so seen it it, it kind of doesn't get any bigger than, uh, than, than this, this story. I, because as I mentioned earlier, I didn't want to do Wilfred in America. I was done with it. I didn't have a great time doing it in Australia. And I had another TV series that I created and also starred in in Australia where I got to play this sports star who was like surrounded with a bevy of women and driving Ferraris and nice clothes. And it was a lot more fun to play than Wilfred in this in this old dog suit. So I told my American manager when we got one and we, we were going to go out with that, a version of that show. And he said to me, he called me up in Australia, he said, look, I know you don't want to, play Wilfred again. I said, I'm not getting in that freaking dog suit again. And he said, hear me out. He said, I think Wilfred could be your Mork and Mindy. He said, like the alien, the dog, everyone's going to remember the dog. doesn't matter how successful the show is. And you'll be able to walk into any room in Hollywood. I said, look, well, Mork and Mindy was my favorite show when I was a kid. (laughs) So if you can sell it, I'll do it. He sold it. I did it. And in season, we were right in season two. I was in my office in the the writer's room and Elijah Wood, my co-star, sends me an email. He says, I'm with Robin Williams promoting Happy Feet 2 and he's a huge fan of the show, him and his wife, and he'd love to play a guest role in the show. No way. Yeah. So I said, he's in season, he's in uh, episode one of season It's right up Robin Williams. I could see that. I could see him. That's so funny. Yeah. Would you believe that was his first acting performance in a television series since Mork and Mindy? No Shut way. Your fucking mouth. I mean, he'd done yeah. David Letterman or been on TV, but the first acting role since Mork and Mindy. And that was the. That's right. Because he, but that was at that era when you did TV only and then you became a big movie star. Yeah. You didn't go back to TV. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And this was, and you know, people were starting to come back to cable TV. Um, you know, the network had a great reputation and, and Elijah was on board. We'd, we'd already had some big name um, co star uh, guest stars in season one. And there he was. I walked into the, the writer's room and I said, uh, Robin Williams wants to be in our show. And <laughs> David Zuckerman, the showrunner, he was like number one, I was number two. He was number one in America. Uh, he was, he developed a uh, family guy and he, you know, he, you know, was, he, he got the show up with us. And he said, um, he said, well, we've already, there's no characters for him. He looked at the, rock, the board. He said, it's like, we, we've already developed all the characters for season two. I said, I repeat, Robin Williams wants to be in our show. <laughs> yeah. So we, found, we found something for him. Yeah, exactly. Course. Because he'd actually played a, uh, as a cat. And, um, and, and we didn't have any character like that. Um, so he just, he played a, a, th- a therapist, the doctor, head doctor for Elijah's character. And uh, I thought, he's not, not going to do it. He did it. And, and you know, that was the easily the greatest um, star moment I've had. Uh, I'm driving to set that morning. I'm like, I was, isn't the dark? It was so early. We're going out to the, um, uh, Gillette Ranch outside in Malibu um, Canyon out there. And uh, and I was like, I'm, I can't believe I'm gonna meet, I'm gonna meet Robin Williams today. I, I don't get starstruck easy and I'm gonna meet him. And and he was like, I walked up, <clears throat> I saw him and went up and I said, uh, it's an honor. He said, the honor's mine. Oh my God, this is this is crazy. That's the best. And, and and you know, we got on so well and um and and his um, makeup artist who'd worked with him for 20 years, she said afterwards, like when we were there, he was only there for two days and um, he, I had, a, I had a rare day off on the second day and he said to me, um, what, are you, what are you going to do on your day off? Because he must have read that I had a day off and it was the day he was shooting. I said, oh, I'm coming in to watch you act. He said, no, 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 you need a break. You, you work, I know how hard you work. And I said, mate, I said, I'd pay to see you. Like I'm coming in to see you. Right, I, to yeah. see you live, I'm coming. The uh, fuck that. And, and, you know, we'd had some great lunches together and, and his makeup artist of 20 years and close friends said that he never 
in her his, in, her, in her experience, had lunch outside of his trailer with other people. And on those two days, he he sat with Elijah and I, and we spoke for a good length of time and got very close. I was actually developing a project for him when he died. He died. Yeah, it was very. Yeah, God rest his soul. He's man, one of, one of the best comedians. ever. Yeah, let's hands get down. into that high I mean, five, guys. You know, listen, I I, I want to say this. Uh, you know, first of all. Robin, Robin, you know, and you having the ability to work with them, I think it was perfect for you, you know, because in, in, in my eyes, Mark and Mindy is one of my favorite shows too, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and then you having the opportunity to do it. And, and honestly, um, you know, I, I want to tell you that, you know, the, the, the journey that we have um, to, to, you know, we, we always don't understand it as entertainers or people that work, you know, um, in our field is who you're going to end up working with next. And, and for, for me, you know, I, I think that would be like one of the top of the totem pole things, you know, Robin Williams, you know, it touched so many, so many, so many lives. I and, loved him. Yeah. Love him still. And, 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 nanu, Nanu, come nanu, on. Nanu, <laughs> and to be, to be able to work, work you know, next, nanu, to nanu, work nanu. next to him is, 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 uh, is something special and for you and Wilfred, you know, uh, cause I, I, I understand there's a separation that you have to sit there and, and actually almost use as like, there's blue on the show. There's Christopher Wright at work. And then there's Chris, Chris Wright at home, you know? And, yeah. and I, I can understand it as, as an artist, a father, a parent, uh, you know, um, well, you've got asshole as well. Then if we're going to throw all the names in oh, there. Shit. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> Hold on. I'm back to reality. Jason saw, hey, I know that name too. Somebody call me? Yes, yeah, there he is. Uh, uh, excuse me? But listen, uh, Jason, this is part of my uh, favorite part of the show, which is called the High Five. So where we ask you five questions about your cannabis experiences. Are you ready, sir? Yeah. Question number one, how old were you the first time you smoked and where did you get it from? 15, my sister. Yeah, I was 15 years old. What was your sister's name? Deborah. Where were Deb you guys at? Uh, we were at the backyard, you know, like she, my sister was sort of uh, older than her years, really. She was, um, oh, she was like seven, well, maybe I was 14 and she was 17 at the time. So 14 and, and, uh, and she just had a joint and I just, uh, she says, try this. And I, I hadn't even been drunk at that point. I'd never even sort of drank alcohol. So I was high before I'd ever got drunk. So yeah. this is in the backyard in Australia. Yeah. I just, because I'm just imagining, was there like a koala just looking? To <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, Jason, speaking of Australia, I mean, where, where at, where are you, where are you from in Australia? Melbourne, you said? Queensland, up in Queensland, um, up in the, sort of the Southeast. You know, yeah. I, I did a, I did a, a tour uh, there and I did, uh, I performed at the Olympic Park Center. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then we took a hopper plane over to Brizzy and did a show in mm -hmm. Brizzy. I was and born in Brizzy. Really? Yeah, Brizzy's a great place. I mean, it's a it's a really nice place, and I, I wish I could have stayed there longer. Australia in, in general, um, what is it called? Queen uh, Queen's Corner or something like that? Queensland. Or, what is it? Queens, Queensland. Queensland. It's fun. Queensland. That's a fun little downtown area. Yeah, it, it's been one of those things on my bucket list I want to get to. My little cousin Angela Johnson, comedian, she went and toured over there. She brought me back this little turtle for my daughter and every time we clean out of stuffed animals we can never get rid of that dumb fucking turtle because it's from australia <laughs> Damn it. so i have something in my house from australia that i've never been to question number two of the high five with jason gan come see his passion his performance and his adorability yes. at g4 live as we will all be there and you did such a great job with the promo for g4 live check out his website wilfredcbd.com what is your favorite way to use cannabis Oh, look, I just, I still love smoking, you know, just bud, just in a pipe. I just break it off. I don't even chop it up. I rarely chop it up. You know, I just break, snap a bit off and just put it straight in a pipe. And I mean, the mob is smoked through a potato this last week. You know, it's like, I, I, um, I don't tend, because I have little kids, I don't tend to leave around, um, you know, bongs or anything like that. So I tend to just, you know, um, either have pipes that I eventually lose and that, which is the situation right now. So, yeah, I'm actually smoking through a potato at the moment. Just snap it off. <laughs> um, potato's whatever. never hurt. Hey, or some foil, whatever works, right? <laughs> I know the kids aren't going to eat a raw potato, right? Yeah. Whatever. Question number question number three of the high five. Craziest place you've ever used or smoked cannabis? Well, crazy. Look, I remember that, like when I was really like just really discovering, really loving cannabis, falling in love with it. And I, I, I often describe my relationship with uh, cannabis as being a spiritual relationship. When I was really tapping into it and uh, with a great, I say girlfriend, but she was a, a buddy, you know, and we were getting high together all the time. And one day 
we just said, hey, you know what would be great? Let's, we, I'd love to get high in like a, a, tra- a caboose, you know, like a train, a caboose, you know? And we're like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. I don't know, it was a random thought. So, well, there's a train station not that far away. So we walked down to this train station and we found these train yards. I'm seeing this out in the middle of nowhere is a red bloody caboose. And it was like, and we went out there and we got it and the door was open and we climbed it, we closed the door and we sat in this this caboose and this, this train wagon and in the middle of nowhere and we just got so high in there. And at one point we heard sort of footsteps on the rocks walking past. Oh, I just got all scared. They're coming. It was such an exciting moment, you know. So it wasn't necessarily that crazy, but it was, you know, we weren't supposed to be in the train yards. And, yeah, like the idea that we had this image of a caboose, we went and found a caboose and we got hired a caboose. That's oh, just so fantastic. great. What a great story to pull out of your ass like that. That's phenomenal. <laughs> you just took me right there. I was with you. I was in it too. <laughs> Dude, not only that, I got like something in my sock from walking towards it. Like, you know what I mean? Like I walk through bushes, like in my head, like I'm pulling something out of my sock right now. That's just stuck in yeah, it's a good, It's a good memory. Uh, Thank you for- that was a wonderful story right there, Jay. What is your go-to munchies after you get high? Uh, yeah, hot. I like to have those hot, spicy. Um, I forget the names of them, but the red—they're always different. Like the Cheetos, those super red, flaming hot Cheetos. And yeah, yeah, because we don't have them in Australia, right? So there's just that kind of flaming hot. They're called takitis or something. Takis, so, takis, taki, taki, taki. My yeah, kids yeah, love takis. Like, oh, <laughs> those are great. Destroy your taste buds, but yeah, I love getting high and uh, and and heightening my. Taste buds sure, sure. Question number five of the high five. If you could smoke cannabis with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? I, I, got, I got to say Jesus. Yes, I yeah, love it. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, look, I like, I don't know, like, I just have so many the questions would never end. And it's just like, he's supposed to be the, you know, well, from, you know, the coolest guy that ever lived. Or coolest whatever, dog you know? ever. Exactly. <laughs> remember that song it's so- like a spoken word song it was like jesus was so cool he was he was funnier than any comedian he was like he, he could play guitar better than any rock star he was jesus was so cool you know i remember hearing that like it was such a cool <laughs> song back in the 90s and and yeah i just think that it'd be great to just get to the bottom of who he is and what he is yeah, I mean, there's only been one guy that they said that's done everything he did, from a carpenter to the Lord and Savior. I mean, let's go, put him on the shelf. I'm good. I'll take him too. I thought, I thought, I thought, down I thought you know I had number one servant, dude. I'm with you, Jay. There's so many people. The crazy part about that is, it's so funny to think we just heard somebody else recently say that, and I don't know why, but this past weekend I was in Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. and I was thinking of so many great people that have been through there, and um, I literally thought of this question, to, like pondered it going there's so many people here in these statues and monuments that i want to smoke with and talk to and just chill but i went back to but jesus he, <laughs> i think he's got to take the yeah, day i was in dc recently as well and yeah it's just it's a pretty beautiful place it is yeah. so much history yeah so yeah, that's much, what i'm saying so my point is i was so just thinking history. that and i literally did exactly what you said if i went the jesus route again and I, i'm with you is my point well I, I, I've, I've been very <laughs> Abraham Lincoln second, of course, second, right? I mean, that's what I'm saying. I'm right there by the Lincoln thing. And I'm like, dude, you'd be one of those ones that I want to do with. I'm not going to lie. You're giving Jesus a run for his money. But, but they say never meet your heroes. So, and I've, and I, you know, and I've, I've met, I, you know, I remember having met a hero of mine years ago. It wasn't that a great experience. I'm not mentioning any names. It was Gene Simmons. But, you know, like I, you know, they say never meet your heroes. I'd hate, I'd hate to meet Jesus and then and be disappointed. Did he treat you <laughs> funny because you're both from across the pond? Isn't he from across the pond as well? Gene Simmons? Yeah, no, he's he's local. He's, he's LA. He's, he's Hollywood. Hollywood. From Kiss. From Kiss. He's Hollywood, yes, right? He's, yeah. He's LA boy. Yeah, yeah, no, I, when I, well, look, you know, I, I I when I was a you know a kid, I had I had my walls pasted covered with posters. Oh, I love my I had I even mine too. did the roof, you know, I even did the, the ceiling, the roof was covered in kiss posters everywhere you go. That's so you know, I had this opportunity where I was backstage years ago at a KISS concert in Australia. They said it was going to be their last concert ever. Turned out to be like many men. They're still going now. They're, <laughs> they're still going. Yeah, they're still doing it. Last week. <laughs> and he was backstage. It was before cell phones and, you know, and I, I had an automatic camera. And I just was so, I swear, he was, he was alone by himself in the full kit. And I was backstage. We got through with my sister who got me high for the first time. She was, you know, managing bands and shit. She got me there. And I'm like, oh, I was so scared, heart pounding. I'm like asking him for a photo. I mean, I just want a photo with him or of him. I didn't care. Uh, I'm like, what if he says no? What if he says no? Like, you'd be devastated. 
And I went up to look, he can't sit. I went up and asked him, and he said no. And then, uh, and then, he, and then, and then, moments later, he was there taking a bunch of photos with hot chicks, you know. So it was kind of like it was just, you know, it was it was personal. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I made a decision then because oh, that- Jason, he even said Jason Gann before he knew who you were. He goes, "Fuck you, Jason Gann." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not hot <laughs> enough, dude. So, so Jason, I, you, know, you know who, you know who else, was, you know who else was a prick to me? Who, who? I just remembered that fucking dude from Aerosmith, Steve Tyler. Yeah, he was, he was weird. Because Wilf, uh, Wilf, 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 we did this thing just before um, Wilfred came out, and Elijah and I were doing this guest spot, like this tiny spot on American Idol, and uh, and we were backstage. That's right. I remember seeing you on there. I this see little, you. Like this little cameo thing, and we we're backstage, and you know, I was. Had the anxiety and my heart was pounding and stuff and there's a few people around there. No, I wasn't. I was never an Aerosmith fan to be, you know, to, to full honest. I know a lot of people love them. I'm not bagging them as a fan, but yeah, he he's there and he turned to me. I was at I was as Wilfred and he just went, "Come on, man!" You know, with all his feathers and all this sort of shit afterwards. And I, you know, I, I wasn't in a position to kind of like I wasn't feeling brave enough to come back at him, and I wasn't expecting that either from a fellow performer to kind of like shit on me like that just before I went out there. But yeah, he did. He did. So I kind of, I kind of owe him one, you know. Yeah, I, I like yeah. Him. Let's let's throw a grudge against him. Yeah. Let's let's. No, that is so, for, I mean, exactly again, well said. Have, for a performer, yeah. like we work, we're working, dude. It is. Yeah. If I have not if I meet him again, I will say something about it. Yeah. You know, you know, I'm, I'm never, I'm never backward and coming forward. It just at that moment, it, it kind of took me by surprise. I was on the side of the, st- the stage and just about and, to and, go and, up. You don't mean like that, yeah, yeah. Just about to go up. Like who does that? You know, yeah. it's it's no, the worst. You don't have enough, enough success. Like you don't have enough. Yeah. Well, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a clown. Yeah, I am a clown. You know, I'm pr- I'm proud to be a clown. Yeah. Well, Jesus. Clowns, clowns feel the world. Oh yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna go make people smile and laugh right now. That yeah, love this character. I mean, you fucking prick. Look, look yourself in the fucking mirror with your feathers and get up. I mean, you're a clown yourself i mean well, that's yeah. what you're doing that's what you are but what like, you shouldn't on another clown <laughs> you know i would have just said i would have just said uh uh you know you, you had a you, you had a great run while you were while you lasted but uh <laughs> you know what i would have said fucking have a wilfred and just don't don't enjoy, yeah, don't yeah, don't i would have just said a lot of things too but like looking back but you know these things these things happen but yeah so i think with gene simmons and steve tyler i don't know get them in a room together maybe We'll see what happens. So, so Mike, Jason, Mike, Iron Mike, anything, me and Iron Mike in there. Anything we I'm forgot before. Him. I love Mike Tyson too. Oh, we're oh, going to see Tyson. Well, Mike's going to be at G4 Live. Yes. Yeah, 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 Live, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, going to be I'm such a fun really show. Yeah, I wish, I nearly, actually, I nearly went up to the, I nearly went up to that thing. They were, they were saying, come on up to the 420 thing up in San Francisco and get, come and have a photo with, come and have a photo with Mike. I'm like, yeah, this is a bit difficult, but I wished I had him because I saw the, you know, on, the, on his way back to Florida, I probably would have been on the flight with him, although I probably wouldn't have been as Wilfred at the time. But uh, when he when he had that, he's on on, on that flight recently. But uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we saw that. I think the whole world got to see that one. That guy was yeah. honestly, you know, in my opinion, um, you know, he he deserved it. Like you know, you know, you can't get into another man's head. I mean, well, you know, here's the thing. You, you, as as Mike Tyson, I almost feel like he he trapped him into that, right? Like he he did that on purpose. Yeah. They knew People it. People can bait you. Yeah. People can bait you. You know, and I and and you know, he, he I saw from the photos. There was a series of photos in the lead up. And you can tell from Mike's face that he's looking like, leave me alone, dude. Like, you just leave me alone. I'm not well, sorry. he should have had security there that should have took that L for him. You know, That's why he needed Wilfred. Yeah. That's why he needed w- Wilfred. Wilfred would have just... <laughs> if Wilfred could have pissed on him, bit him, something, right. backed him up. with You're going to get within an arm's length of Mike Tyson if Wilfred's there. <laughs> Jason, for the security dog, you know, it's going to be great to see you out there in Vegas. So when you see us, come up and say hi. Yeah. Come in, don't act like a big dog. Cool. Like you're too cool for us. <laughs> don't right? be the big dog. I'll fucking run up and tackle you, Jason. I swear to God, right, right on the side. Well, yeah, okay. Well, now that I know you said that, don't be surprised if I jump on screen and read it like if you're in the middle of a show, now I know that you come and tackle me. Then I don't want to come and tackle you. <laughs> you know what? I might. I think my boot's going to be off by then, so I might be able to. You know, it'll be a slow come up. You know, I just had ankle surgery, but. When I get to you, it's still yeah, 200 plus coming. No, out. I think we should just do the leg lift on Tyson and see if he punches <laughs> you. You know, just lift the leg. Yeah, on we're him. gonna do the leg gimp. Everyone's just <laughs> cannabis and medicated up. That's all we're up there. Just a bunch of gimps at G4 Live and you. If you don't go, you don't grow. <laughs> yes. So, Jason, thank you for joining us. Is there anything that we missed uh, before we let you get on out of here? Did you get all the five out? Did you get all the questions? Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. You said Jesus. Question number Jesus. five was: If you could smoke with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? Yeah. Well, well, guys, you know it's it's great um, seeing you again, and yeah, I'm really excited about G4 Live. If anyone's seeing it going, you know, like Wilfred's actually going to be 
on the stage with a microphone in his hand saying some funny ass shit, you know, and I was going to be doing that actually before the pandemic happened because I was just kind of like, you know what? I saw, I saw Tommy Chong. I saw this image of Tommy Chong um, on a, at, a, at, a, at a High Times Cannabis Cup and he was sitting on a king's throne and they came and put a, a crown on his head. And I just looked at that and I thought, one day that's going to be Wilfred. You know, I, so I want to I wanna, I wanna awesome. get up there, right? So I want to, and you know, I, I'm a live performer from years ago, like comedy. So I'm just like, okay, it's time to, people for years say, you know, what are you doing stand up comedy? Well, mostly people would go do stand up comedy, like Robin Williams, do stand up and then they do television. For me, I was lucky I got the television first. So I never did the stand up, but now I'm really excited about it. I'm working on, I've got some great material I'm working on. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, get giving people that Wilfred experience and just go ahead and drop it. Drop yeah. Cannabis Talk 101 in that, but I'd love to have you Wilfred on the show. Uh, the the on, whole dog. Yeah, the dog. In, in I mean, see, as I say, I'm the founder CEO of Wilfred Cannabis. Wilfred is the owner operator. Yes, right. right. So yeah. he has his, he 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 thinks he's running the show. And he's uh, got a rough gig. No yeah, pun intended. He gets all <laughs> rough, <laughs> rough, rough, rough. He gets all the glory. You know, he gets all right? the glory. He's like, nobody knows how rough this is for <laughs> me to do. Rough. Hey, yeah. Rough. Uh, Jason, how did you get hooked up with G4 Live? How did that even come about for you? Uh, well, a couple of years ago, I think they first reached out to me and about doing something back then. And then uh, it just, you know, pandemic happened. And it, and I was I was planning to do a bunch of, you know, stand-up stuff and get really you know, going live performing again. And then that just sort of put the stops on that. So, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I came circle, um, Tim, you know, from G4 just reached out to me and, and, and I said, yeah, I, I think we almost did this a couple of years ago. So I was like, let's, let's do it. So now I'm kind of going to Vegas. Fantastic. It's going to be a great show, man. Resorts World, the 12th through the four, uh, 15th, Joe? Something like that. 12th through the 14th. 12th through the 14th. 12th to the 14th, G4 Live, G4 Live at the Bud Tender Awards. It's going to be an amazing place. If you don't go, you don't grow. Sincerely, guys, and listen, I just want to say that, Wilfred, it's been great having you on the show, and Jason, again, it's been great having you on the show. I got to give it both to you guys because Wilfred, you know, is, is its own character, and it deserves its own credit, and Jason, you do too, man. You're a fantastic, fantastic person there, uh, and we want to thank you for joining the show. At well, Cannabis. before we leave, because I'd like to ask him this, Jason, have you ever caught Wilfred licking himself or scratching himself inappropriately. <laughs> now, I've seen him doing something with my wife one night that I wasn't real happy about. Oh, no. <laughs> Those dogs can do that, that motherfucker. Yeah. Because Bear's locked up in Silma. Oh, no. He's locked up in a, Bear's in a, Bear's in a, um, a storage facility in Silma. Get your nose out of there, boy. I've got to get, I've got to get Bear out of there. Oh. Uh, you know, but, uh, I know, I don't think we're going to go, but it's a quick last story. Bear, the bear character is disgusting. You know, he's he's a semen stained teddy bear from from the TV series. And and when it was all done, they said, Jason, what what props do you want? What souvenirs do you want? And they said, You want bear, right? I said, I don't want bear. I just had a son, a little baby, beautiful bear. I was like, I want my kid playing with that disgusting thing. So give him to Elijah. Elijah came to me. He said, Is it true you don't want bear? You got to have a bear. I said, No, 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 I don't want you have him, mate. You have him, like you, you know. He said, Okay. So he took bear. I had a bunch of other memorabilia. And then when Wolf was finished. Spoiler alert, um, we had a wake for Wilfred, right? So we had just like, instead of a rap party, I had a wake at my house and it was all very funeral-like and my room was black. And, and Elijah drove to the wake uh, with Bear in the passenger seat. And so <laughs> you, if you can imagine if you're driving along in LA, if, if you had a scene, Elijah driving on the 405, dressed like suit with, with Bear in the passenger seat. Get Bear. So he brings Bear to, the, to my place, <laughs> the wake on everything. And when Elijah left, he left a bit earlier, like he always does. And he said, look, I don't, I'm sorry to leave, but uh, I'm going to leave Bear here. I can't take Bear while the party's still going, so I'll, I'll, I'll get Bear next time I see you. I haven't seen Elijah since. Right? So 20 years like, later? <laughs> so Bear, it was the, you know, the, the, the kid that, that uh, the parents, are, the divorced parents are arguing about who doesn't want him, right? So, so Bear is, uh, I'm glad I've got Bear now. Oh, you uh, got yeah, about Bear. So he's still <laughs> at the house? <laughs> what? Is he still at the house? He's in a storage still facility. More. In still more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's in still more. That's awesome, Jay. <laughs> Can't wait to hang out with you, brother. Look forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too, guys. Thanks so much. Well, there it is, guys. It's Cannabis Talk 101. And remember this. If no one else loves you, we do. We do. Thanks, guys. <laughs>